Okay, I think it's all good. <coughs> it always says, uh, if it's good, it just says your stream has been copied to your, your stream URL has been copied to your uh, desk, uh, clipboard. So, uh, I'll just try going there and see what happens. Oh yeah, that's the actual view of it. Please stand by. I'm gonna stop it. Actually, I'm gonna close it. So I'm gonna be using up resources on my system. Now I'm on. Oh, that's the last one. I don't think it'll show this one. No, it just shows the data on the last one. So if you just, just not no quick way to get. Close that page too. Go back to this one where I'm looking at my completed ones and hit live now. I thought there was a quicker way to do this, but <clears throat> it should be. First thing you want to make sure is are you live? Or maybe that's what I need to do. You know? You see if you're on a live control room for the wrong video, then it just shows you the stats when it's done. So I don't guess there's a quicker way. So I'm on uh, 360p. I've been calling it 320p over and over, I think. That's because that's what my uh, most of my webcams would do. You know, that was their kind of their... Well, they do 240, 320, and 640 or something like that. <coughs> this one, my one, my double, double, double webcams. Uh... My bigger picture here that's on my laptop that'll do the full size of the laptop screen which is a little more than uh, 720p actually it's kind of in between that and 1080 and uh, the little picture here that one will do 640 uh, but I'm broadcasting my whole thing in 360 because that is the only size that seemed to be able to send up without the stream uh, lagging, you know, lagging behind and going bad. So, it's, you know, I mean, it's usable for just some webcam stuff and all that, but when you want to do a desktop re recording, I mean, I've been looking back at them, I know better that's blurry, it can't be read, so, you know, it's not, no use in it that way. Uh, you can do pretty good ones on this, I've done plenty of them on this laptop and other computers, you know, you can you can do pretty good the desktop <coughs> videos straight from the uh, desktop itself so and you know save it edit uh, edit it upload it all that stuff I just it'd be nice if you could do live a lot of possibilities if that would work I clicked on my uh, other I don't know what they call it should show it here in a minute you can use it to yeah, okay. add uh, all kinds of things, uh, effects for instance, look at that, and uh, you can add, um, there's a bunch of little different effects in there, kind of your standard old just fun stuff, but that's all that Manicam app is what that is, that's a video I was, desktop video I was talking, <coughs> I was talking about. <laughs> Um, pretty funny app, got some cool effects and stuff. So, you know, I guess that's, unless, I, unless there's something I'm not understanding here, or some limitations of the program that, of the free version of the program, that could be, I don't, don't, haven't seen anything like that, but there could be some limitations that don't let it, uh, <coughs> there's a reason it won't stream. I just don't see... Uh, you should be able to do 720p with no problem with uh, with 4 megabit upload speed that should be fine because back you know back when they had one that was a I used to watch you know 720p videos on 3 gigabit download so I don't see why I couldn't upload them that's, that's what I think what I'm thinking here so uh, <coughs> And here lately, with my, I've mentioned before, my one of my my switch was going giving trouble, and I didn't realize it. And uh, you know, I kept having trouble with the video buffering. Then it got really bad. So I, 
Okay, I did a whole bunch of tests yesterday. It's been hours and hours making sure because I got one, two, three routers and I had a switch. And that switch was between, it was the first router, my, my Linksys is my first one, talking, to, you know, facing the internet. And I had this switch and then the switch went to another router and then one of my other routers went back to the Linksys as well. So to get everything all around the house connected, you know. Um, computers, most of it's all right in here with me, but there's other computers, uh, a little Raspberry Pi TV watching with XBMC on it from for the TV I made, and uh, <coughs> something like that. Figured out. I was down to one, one to three megabit download speeds, and I thought, what the heck, I thought it was my SP, because that has happened on and off with them, you know, and, uh, Turned out it was just the opposite. It was that switch, and uh, a bunch of testing for calling and arguing with them. <laughs> but uh, that switch was just not working right, and so I took it out of the loop and uh, getting <coughs> getting lots, uh, getting 60 to 65 megabits downloads. And then my, my but my upload was always the same. It's still right around right what it's supposed to be, four megabits, a little more, a little less. So, um, all the things that a lot of us would like to do on the internet won't, won't really work, looks like, unless they st <coughs> the ISP start giving us at least 10 megabit uploads. It, they used to be common five years ago. There was a wireless service around here that did 10 up and 10 down. That was the fastest speed you could get was 10 down. And they did 10 up and 10 down. They had like one and two with my charter and my ISP. The most now they're only giving you four, so you know, even though you're getting 60 down, that doesn't mean you can do all that much, especially with the uploads. But see, your downloads there's data that goes back up to talk back to the server while you're downloading, so uh, you can, I, even with that 60 megabit, you can set there if you're watching a 1080p video, it still may cache on you, buffer so. The cache will be behind, and it'll ha it'll buffer on you. So, of course, it's a lot better now since since I switched all that around. But um, got my got my uh, rid of my switch that was giving trouble. <coughs> <coughs> so anyway, I just wanted to see how long this thing would go. Six minutes. I think it went eight, ten minutes before before it went bad the last several times. <coughs> but I think I did finally figure out that uh, that um, see it's still good. No other messages, but the initial one saying it's good. I did finally figure out I can do the 360p. Uh, you know pretty well as long as I want to and it still work um, yeah I changed, I don't know if I mentioned that but I changed my audio settings again uh, in this uh, Windows setup here I, get to, these, I wish it was a I run Linux and that's what I use all day every day but uh, so I'm having to use Windows here to use these apps uh, this X split it's pretty good I like it uh, I actually like it better than you have all the you have like up to four it's got up to 12 scenes you could set but it'll let you do four on the free version and I like the app better I actually found it by accident <coughs> trying to find help for wirecast wirecast uh, it'll it it's it says it authenticates but then First time, I, first day I tried to use it, it kept saying it authenticated. Then it said it had an error authenticated. Now today it doesn't show any errors, but it still doesn't send up a string. So uh, <coughs> tired of messing with it. I know people use it, so I know it will work. But I don't know what the big deal. What why it's so hard to use. But anyway, you know, there's some forums, some Google forums actually that I found looking for help and going for. Uh, Wirecast and found people were saying oh, I just started using this XSplit app so I just finally after several hours I found oh, I'm gonna look at that and it just took me a couple hours to get it up and going watching some videos and stuff. so anyway <clears throat> my audio 
in Windows 7 here, uh, recording devices. Right click on the little speaker icon. Uh, of course, I won't change anything, but there's the one that I'm using. I believe I can look at the properties. Okay. Look at the properties. And uh, <coughs> go to levels. And uh, it had kind of set itself, or I left it that way, at 100 on the microphone, 100%. And it was a 30 dB plus 30 dB microphone boost. And that was great as far as you know, picking that sound up and getting a good, nice, strong signal. But it was also distorting. <coughs> and it was cramming, you know, it was hitting. Digital is a lot harder to do than analog. Uh, analog, you could always just kind of get it bouncing around up towards the top. And even if it went over 100 dB, then you wouldn't uh, usually distort unless you scream or something but with, when you're doing a digital input like this digital recording then if it's anywhere near 100 dB it's going to distort or we'll see how low that signal is uh, I imagine you'll have to turn uh, this video the audio up pretty high but any oh I meant to quite done there but I tried uh, I also tried, I uh, had this lifted on plus 30 dB, and that's when you start getting noise, you get that buzzing noise, when, when you boost the signal, you always get them, even, even when you're using analog mixer, I used to mix sound for bands for about 12 years, so I've done it a lot, and I mess with computers ever since, computer audio with computers since, uh, the, since they invented MP3s, since I, I started with waves, you know, Windows wave files. Back in uh, '98, uh, anyway, um, I tried bringing, leaving this on 30, the, the boost on 30 where it was already, and brought this down to 85 percent or 85 dB or whatever that represents. Like I said, it represents dB. <coughs> well, I guess that really represents percent. This actually says dB on it, decibels. But uh, so I'm trying to find the best. Can't remember since the last time I used it. Because when I do things, I generally always do them in Linux, so this should be okay. Cancel so I don't jack that part up. <coughs> so I'm still good at uh, 10 minutes, almost 11 minutes. My throat's tired of me talking now. I'm starting to get my hoarse. So, uh, that's all the, that's just the apps I use now. It's, I don't like hunting for stuff so things that I use ever even fairly often I put on the desktop um, anyway uh, that wirecast is a pretty cool I spent uh, six or eight hours missing with it and it's a cool app but all the cool stuff I don't want to open it because it'll uh, mess up my uh, see all everything I've got on this system is all except for these are free open source applications uh, which is what I'm usually making my screencasts about instead of about, uh, you know, <coughs> shareware, trialware, whatever. This is better than trialware. Either one of these are, you know. The, it, it is free to use. It's limited, limited, uh, what do they call it? Anyway, it's limited software. Free, free limited use kind of thing. Um, I'm not, I'm spoiled with open source. You don't have to worry about all that. You find a company. You, uh, yeah, since 2005, I've been uh, running Linux and using open source applications, so I'm pretty spoiled. But anyway, you find an app you like, and it works good, you use it, and the whole thing, whatever's supposed to do, it does it. This is, I'm not going to turn on the public view. I just, uh, I can't sit still. Um, I can't sit still whenever I'm, unless I'm used, to, I'm usually doing something, you know, on the, when I'm on the computer. So, uh, I think that's long enough to pretty well say that works. I'm going to hit each deal one more time. I'm going to go back to that one with the video. See what it does. See if it'll play right. That's one of the main things. This sure takes a long time to switch over. There it goes. There's a bunch of little different effects in there. And your standard old just fun stuff that's what I discovered first when I uh, 
when I first got the uh, got this kitchen I played with those a little bit and uh, you can uh, let me see I'm gonna switch over to the um, has a bunch of different transitions so I've got it on random so I'm not quite sure what we'll get every time Oh, that's stuck in. <coughs> well, that was great. Good switch, huh? <coughs> switch into me coughing. Um, so anyway, I'll look back at that and see if it um, it's lagging like it has been in the higher resolutions. This may not be actually be use useful to try to play a video in the live stream if it's not gonna if it's gonna lag. <coughs> So, um, that's pretty well enough testing, I think. But, um, <coughs> yeah, I, now that I've got my, um, uh, got my, um, uh, laptop cam over there, well, I'm trying. I'm trying to say, uh, I have my application window on my laptop screen, and then my air and my desktop. I just, when I'm on the desktop, I can look straight at my big monitor, and I can read it better. So uh, that's pretty good. That's a good way to do this this application. Then when you do switch to desktop, you just go right to desktop. You don't get all. You don't have your uh, XSplit window sitting there in the foreground. Uh, with the video feedback, it gets aggravating after a while. It's kind of cool looking for a minute or two, but then it gets aggravating. So I like that. <coughs> the switching is slow. I should say, you should say, okay, I'm switching, and then let you see how slow it is. But it's it's really slow, and it's set on. You can set how long it's supposed to take to switch, but it's much much quicker than what it's doing. I have to look at it again to make sure what I got it. The default is pretty quick, I think. So anyway, <coughs> here we go. Um, I think it's uh, figure out it knows it's itching. Okay, so I figured out um, what it can and can, can and can do with it, um, even with four megabit uploads. A little more than that, generally four and a half uh, speeds and uh, 60 to 65 download speeds. You still can't do 720p. So again, it doesn't make sense to me. It should work, I think. All I can do is 360p. Though. <coughs> okay, it's done. Signing out. Goodbye.